so uh, Marco uh, is uh, with SUSE. Uh, he has been around in sort of DPDK um, and VPP world for, for quite a while, was um, back at Intel sort of as uh, DPDK um, was getting kicked off and um, is a committer uh, in the VPP project. And so, um, and I, what are you talking about? I meant to pay, I meant to look at that. Hmm? <laughs> Ah, implementing a new layer four, layer four protocol in VPP. So, great. Uh, take it away, Marco. OK. Thank you for the introduction. I've been given the really tough job to be sitting here now between you and lunch. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, uh, yeah, yeah, so I'll don't be, run over. I'll be quick. <laughs> I'll be quick. Uh, the reason why I put this together or thought about this presentation was because I approached the VPP community fairly a little bit of time ago. Uh, it was October of last year. Uh, and I started with the first a Geneva tunnel implementation. And then uh, Ed and Dave proposed to me to go ahead and implement SCTP. So since SCTP has been uh, merged end of January, and since then there were been obviously more patches to clean it up and add uh, extra features. I thought it was uh, a, a nice thing to basically put this together uh, and give you a fair idea of what means going through the VPP infrastructure and write a new protocol for it. So um, during, during the presentation, I obviously uh, keep an eye on the SCTP, which is the one that I am the author for, uh, and I, I know better. Uh, but uh, the concept and the ideas are coming from the session and application and transport layer that uh, Florin has been talking to you about. Uh, finally, I'll give you a little bit of what I learned from this experience uh, and a little bit of recommendations if you're going through it yourself. So this doesn't want to go, doesn't want to be uh, networking, uh, RFC readout, but just to give you an idea of what SCTP is, well, it's regulated or uh, uh, depicted uh, by the RFC 4960. Um, it's a protocol that has been designed for uh, comms, telecoms company, um, and there is a specific protocol that I know about that's called Diameter that actually goes over SCTP. Um, it's, a, it's a very reliable protocol and it's a very features rich and this slide shows you a little bit of what <coughs> SCTP is trying to accomplish. I don't want you to, to, to read through this or um, necessarily know about SCTP, but it will come handy when I'll talk to you about the lessons learned and the approach I followed uh, to the implementation of, of this, this new L4 protocol. Um, so let's go and talk about the infrastructure. So the, there's an infrastructure, and apologies about the phone, but it's pretty big. There's a structure that you are going to implement if you want to implement a new protocol in VPP, and it's the Transport Proto VFTT data type. Uh, it's nothing else that offering you uh, pointers to functions that you're going to implement yourself. Uh, they're very self-explanatory, most of them. Some of them might be a little bit more obscure. Um, so let's go through this for, for a second. Uh, obviously, when you think about a socket, uh, when you use a socket on, uh, with, with whatever programming language, you're going to have a bind to, to the socket a connect to the socket, and obviously an unbind or a close. Um, and then there are other operations that you may not see from, uh, from what, for example, a C socket API looks like, because those are hidden to the, to the end user and pretty much managed by the Linux kernel, in that case, if you're writing a C socket. Um, so in VPP, because we are actually implementing the, uh, the protocol itself, we are exposing those features to the to the person, to the developer, who is going to take care of writing the, the protocol. Uh, two examples are the send MSS and the send space function pointers, right? 
So what they're going to do for you? Well, uh, the sendMSS is basically the function that the session layer is going to call to know how much data your physical or virtual interface allows you to send. Um, might be the standard M2 size 1500 or uh, the jumbo size 9000, right? It doesn't really matter the, the actual um, site itself, but what this function is trying to accomplish is to know how much data you can send over the network. Uh, just after figuring out what is the maximum, it calls the other function point, which is the send space, to know how much actual data can sh be shipped at this right moment. Because the, the amount of data that you can send doesn't just depend on the physical transport that you have, but also depends on, for example, whether your network is in congestion, whether there is space, in this case also in the FIFO, that is being used to, to send the data over the network. And so the send space functionality is going to take care of all these and do the, doing the calculation for, for the upper layer and, and tell the exact amount of data that can be sent. Uh, I, I think uh, Florin mentioned it before, we have different type of transports. Uh, obviously, we have the TCP, which is uh, reliable, UDP, which is unreliable. unreliable. Now we have SCTP. Uh, he's been adding in the TLS support, which um, fakes an application itself inside VPP. Uh, and so the TX type in this data structure is going to tell VPP of what type of transport we're talking about. Uh, so uh, if Sorry, this, the service type is going to, to tell VPP which type of transport we're talking about. Uh, which, again, could be the reliable one, the unreliable one, the application type one. And the TX type, instead, is saying which type of uh, the queuing mechanism we are going to use. So, for example, the, a reliable transport like TCP or SCTP is going to use the TX peak while the datagram transport uh, is going to use the TXDQ. Uh, the rest of the um, pointers here are fairly easy and self-explanatory, like a get a connection or bind. Uh, what you need to remember is that, for example, the bind is going to be pretty much called by the peer that is going to be sitting, listening for a connection to come, while the get connection is instead called by the client, in this case, who is going to initialize a new connection connecting to, 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 the, to the peer. Uh, similarly, there are other functionality like the get listener and get alpha open. These are going to be used internally uh, to basically take what is the handle of a connection and, and, and basically look up for uh, information about this, this connection. Do you have any question on this before I move on? This is really the core of the interface that uh, every transport is going to implement. Okay. So I liked the, the idea to basically divide the registration of this new protocol into distinguished parts. One is the output or the outgoing node, and the other one is the inputting node. So basically, the traffic that leaves my peer and the traffic that is incoming for me. Uh, so let's see, for, for, for the output node, uh, there is the micro function called VLIB init function where you can actually pass in your init protocol function, uh, function itself. And uh, what is going to be done in this, uh, in this function? Well, you're going to basically retrieve the protocol information that it's about this new protocol that you're going to implement. Uh, and the function is the IP get protocol info. You're going to set up the formatting and for unformatting of the headers. Uh, this is actually very, in, in, it's, it's, it's cool when you're going to, to deal with, uh, for example, debugging and printing out information about the streams that you see. Uh, finally, you're going to, 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 to register your protocol and you're going to call the transport register protocol function in BPP where you're going to pass in the, well, 
uh, the number that is identifying your new protocol. Uh, it's a defined. Uh, the structure that I just showed you earlier, with all your pointers to the functions that need to be called. And you're actually going to do this twice. One is for the IPv4, and the other one is for the IPv6. Uh, at this function, you're going to pass the last parameter, which is going to be your output node index. So. Uh, I'm sure you know about this, but uh, BPP is um, it's all based on nodes and the graphs that you can build with nodes. So I need to tell BPP the index of the node which I'm interested in for this, for this protocol. So that basically when the graph gets traversed, the, my node can be found. Uh, finally, if you're planning to add any API, uh, so to expose any functionality to the end user, for programming your protocol. And actually, for SCTP, I think I've added two API to basically fine tune some, uh, pro some protocol specific behavior. You can call here at this point a call to your API uh, function, which takes care of registering, for example, the API or I initializing your uh, API in specific ways that you might be seeing fit. So this is the output node. Obviously, traffic does not just leave our node, our, our peer, but can also come back, right? If you're sending some data, at least the protocol will need to take care of the ax that the, the data is, uh, that needs to be basically act by your, by your peer. So um, an interesting perspective is that uh, the, um, the session layer in VPP is disabled by default, uh, which also means that uh, if you have a protocol that's sitting in the session layer, it's also disabled by consequence. And there is an API that allows you to basically enable it. Uh, and uh, what's happening also that the session layer checks for, uh, for uh, any transport that are enabled at runtime. I, I believe Florin, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so what happens is that the function that is being called within your transport layer or your transport protocol to enable it is the pointer registered with the dot enable in the structure that I showed you very, very early. Uh, at that point, you basically can call, again, two functions. One is for IPv4, the other one is for IPv6 to register your protocol. Again, it's uh, your protocol number in the IP family listed of YANA numbers. Uh, and again, you can pass in the index of your input node, which is going to take care of the incoming traffic. And obviously, at this stage, you can take care of initializing any data structures that you may need to be, to, to be initialized. Another quite important aspect of uh, protocol implementation and uh, is that, well, for sure TCP and SCTP requires it. it because it's a, it's a reliable protocol, you need to, to verify that data is being received, or better said, act by your peer within a certain amount of time. This, um, this amount of time is called the RTT, and in fact, both I think in TCP, if I remember correctly, I, I saw the, the, the the whole calculation of it, and SCTP does it as well. There is a calculation to basically uh, measure the RTT of a, of a packet send. If, this, if the ACK doesn't come after a certain amount of time specified by the RTT, then the peer will have to resend the data, because it means that the data hasn't been received. Um, a nice way for doing this is by using the timers implementation in BPP. Timers can be program programmed uh, with, with how much time you want a timer to lapse uh, and with a specific ID, which, for example, you can use to, to identify your timer for a specific case in your protocol. So, for example, in the SCTP case, there are different timers depending on which stage of the uh, of the 
protocol initialization or sending, receiving, or shutting down the, 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 the connection you're in. So because of that, it's quite handy to, to, to have an ID that identifies your timer so that you can basically start, stop, reset your timer anytime throughout the, 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 the lifespan of a connection. Um, in case of SCTP, which also um, um, uh, foresees a heartbeat functionality for, the, for reliability purposes, the same, the same uh, implementation of timers are used so that basically on a given, on a given time the timer expires and it no, it's known that uh, an heartbeat has to be sent. Uh, any questions so far? Okay. So let's talk about the handling of incoming frames. Um, this is not very different from what uh, has been done for TCP. And, and actually, I would like to thank Florin for the great example of TCP because it's very, very clean code, uh, very easy to understand. And I really like the idea of having a dispatcher node, so I, I, I made it mine as well. <laughs> uh, so why using a dispatcher node? Well, um, this dispatcher node it's the, the, this, this, the node that basically is being executed first in the graph specific, specifically to the, to the protocol. It's, um, it's, a, it's a nice way of doing the, the, the overall uh, dispatching of the messages or the, of the frames that are coming in because it offers a couple of uh, good points. The first thing is that allows you to do early drop of frames. Uh, because you will know that at a specific state that you are in, your state machine can only accept a certain amount, a cer sorry, a certain type of frame or a certain type of message. So if by protocol a message cannot be received in a given stage, you can easily put it as a drop for, for the, for, or as, a, as a next node of execution. And in fact, the, the, dispatch, the, the dispatch node uh, is being called uh, with, a, with, a dis with, a, with a dispatch table, which takes four arguments. The, one, the first one, which is the identifying the state that the state machine is in. The second one, that is the message being received. The third one, that is the next node that we want to execute. And the fourth one, which identifies potentially uh, an error uh, in, in, our, in our protocol. So the next slide shows you a little bit of what happens. So I thought about showing you a picture of really how the, uh, the graph node looks like. For, this is for SCTP, but I think it's very similar for TCP, uh, Florin. So we have a dispatcher node, uh, and then we have four nodes which can uh, be called for incoming frames. The listen, the receive, the established, and the shutdown. Uh, the listen node is the one that takes care really of the first frame received uh, by a peer when, a, con when a, a connection is being established. And at this stage, there are three potential things that can happen. This is because by SCTP protocol definition, there are three things that can actually happen in real life. The first one is that Together with the init message, the peer also sends data to us. And this is what's called bundling functionality in SCTP. So if that's, that's the case, there is a dotted arrow going from listen to the session layer to enqueue the data received up to the application. There could be also the case when in listen uh, state, we receive an uh, init ACK. An init ACK is just wrong because the, 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 converse, the communication is just starting, so some appear that it's in listening mode cannot receive an init ACK, should receive an init. And so in that case, we have a dotted arrow that goes from listen to the error drop node, which takes care of discarding the frame. It's not good for, for, for us. Um, and 
again, the listen node can uh, also notify the session layer if the initialization has started to say to the session layer, hey, look, uh, a connection is being created here. I need some information reserved and some uh, also memory allocated for, 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 for uh, future purposes. And so a session is being created for, uh, for, 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 uh, for an SCTP connection. The other nodes, the receive node, instead is, uh, is the node that takes care of incoming data on the client side for the, for the first, for the first uh, steps, which is, again, handling the in attack. Uh, and again, there are uh, three options here. The, the, the receive can go to the session layer, again, to say, hey, this, uh, this connection looks good to me, and notify the up, up layer that things have to, 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 to get started. Um, also, the receive can go to the output node to send what it's called cookie message to the other peer. Or again, if things just don't look good, if instead of an init act, for example, we receive uh, an operation error message, then, well, we, we discard the frame and done. Uh, and similarly, the established and the shutdown. The established node is the one that in SCTP takes care of when the connection is fully established, which means that uh, the four-way handshake, because in SCTP, we talk about four-way handshake differently from the three-way handshake in TCP. So when the four-way handshake is completed and we can start and sending, start sending and receiving data, we are in the, in the established phase, and so we have an established node. Um, when the shutdown is initialized, whether it's being uh, initialized or received from a peer, the shutdown node takes care of handling the shutdown phase, which again, in SCTP, it's a three-way closing of the connection. Uh, what I wanted to show you with this picture is that it's a, uh, well, I don't know if you think that it's messy or if it's clean enough, but uh, what I really liked when I, when, I, when I finished to put this together is that uh, you see really quite clear what can happen with the protocol, and you can easily follow the, the protocol phases just looking at the nodes and just looking at the arches, uh, which is the real power of BPP. It's also very, very self-explanatory when, when, uh, when you look at a feature. And I won't talk about the session layer because it has already been uh, talked about by Florin, but sh surely we have an application that is basically taking or using the implementation. And so basically the application can talk with the session layer, which can receive and send data. And the send data is the one that is being uh, done through the push adder function. So if you remember the, the data structure that I showed you at the beginning, there was a function pointer called dot push underscore header. And that is the one that's being called by the session layer when new data is available in the FIFO to be sent out. And the, the push header basically goes and obviously always deal with the output node, because that's where we want to send data. The output node uh, obviously enqueues data to the, to the next node in the, in, the, in the stack, which is the IP layer. And at that point, we can forget about it, since we are just talking about L4. The L3 is being taken care of by the, by the IP layer itself. So with regards to the file organization, uh, I call this gui guideline, but it's more like a, I don't know, recommendation. Or it, it, again, thanks to the TCP implementation, it was really, really easy to go through the code and figuring out who was doing what. So we have, a, we have a new protocol, .h, um, which just takes care of defining all the uh, functions and data structures that are going to be used internally by, by our protocol implementation. Uh, it could be just functions that are being used by one file versus another, and you need to, to basically export the functionality, etc. Uh, we have a, pro a protocol underscore packet .h. Uh, in this in this file, if you look it up in the repo, you'll see that all the possible messages 
for SCTP but also for TCP are defined. So it's where you're basically finding the RFC data, <laughs> data structures are here. Um, then we have a protocol.c, which is where, for example, the data structure that I showed you is going to be defined, allocated, and where all those function pointers are going to be declared and defined. Uh, again, this is self-explanatory, the underscore input and underscore outputs, which are basically the two parts, the two distinguished parts, which are dealing with incoming traffic and outgoing traffic. Uh, a format.c, which contains all the functions that are going to basically formatting and unformatting the headers. Uh, and again, an underscore algo, where you may want to add, for example, functionality that's specific to the congestion algorithms used for, uh, I think, TCP has two or three files for, for, algori for, for algorithm. Uh, we, we with for SCTP, there's just one. So, okay. Since I'm short, so what did I learn? Uh, I would like to, 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 to let you know. Uh, well, when, when you think about implementing a new protocol and you look at the RFC uh, or the ITF, it can be scary, right? <laughs> there's a lot of information. There are lots of uh, things that need to be done in order to implement uh, top to bottom a, a, a new protocol. Uh, my recommendation is to, to start with the basics, uh, to start to identify the features that you really, really need in order to have your protocol working according to the specs. Uh, what I mean by this is, well, the first incarnation of your protocol may forget about corner cases, like, what if this, then do this? Well, you know, there are lots of corner cases in every single protocol. And uh, if you start looking at the corner cases first, you don't get your protocol implemented. Because there are like 200 millions of corner cases that can happen. So let's start with the basics. And the basics are definitely like getting your state machine implemented. So the first mes message needs to be replied with this message, and then this message, and then this message. And just start with that. Um, Another thing that I really found beneficial was to ha to use the draft uh, method in, in Garrett to basically only have some people looking at my patch, but not, not because I wanted to hide. No, because every time you actually publish uh, publicly a patch on Garrett, then you trigger all the builds. Uh, and that takes resources. Uh, with some code that is being just written, uh, most of the time it's going to fail. And also because most of the times so when you are in this mode, you just want to save your code so that you can have a repo that it's somewhere else than your machine, and it's safe. That's how I used it. And together with that, I started having Florin looking at the code, Damien, Dave, Barak, uh, just to get feedback. Uh, again, at this stage, do not get picky about how you call things. I think I renamed functions uh, God knows how many times. Uh, you can always find, find a better name for a function, and you can always find a better name for a variable. So don't get crazy about this at this stage. You can call it ABC if that helps you remembering what you're doing. Uh, when basics are working, then go public. Don't be scared. Uh, the FIDO VPP community is a very friendly community is different from many others. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Any particular ones you have no, in I, mind? I, I, I'm recorded, so I'm not going to mention. <laughs> um, the, 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 there, are, there are already apps that can be used to basically integrate your, uh, your new protocol. Uh, and that's what I did. I used the Echo Client, Echo Server uh, app to integrate SCTP. Um, and the recommendation is to at least test the, 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 the early phases of your protocol between two VPPs, right? Uh, it, can be, it can be hard to test uh, um, inter-stax communication between, I don't know, using VP, uh, TCP on VPP and TCP on Linux. There could be things that are somehow done slightly different and you never know wh wh who's right and who's not. So 
if you use at least two BPPs between the two of them, at you can try your implementation that it's working, sending and receiving data. Uh, once this is done, there are going to be the missing functionality, the missing features that I spoke to you about that you didn't implement at the first steps. Well, let's follow up with those. You can have upcoming patches and, 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 and new code being merged after the first one has been accepted. So there's still stuff to, to, to be done. So first of all, it's a very new implementation. As I said, it was merged in, in uh, end of January, and uh, other patches came in February and March to add and clean up things. Uh, it, needs, uh, it needs love. It needs people that uh, are willing to, to try it out, to test it, to, to, to see how good or bad the implementation is. Uh, I'm happy to receive feedback and uh, bugs reports uh, and uh, fix things when they do not work. Um, there are, as again, as a, uh, with, with regards to the missing features, one of the big things of HTTP is also that uh, it's, it's, uh, it's providing bundling. As, a, as, a, as an idea, as a design. The bundling is not yet implemented. So basically, we are not taking the full advantage of what SCTP allows. So we, we, we are not, for example, putting in data at the init stage, or putting in data even at, at the shutdown phase. That's something that can happen by protocol, but is not implemented. Uh, the source code for SCTP is source vnet SCTP. Questions? <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Cool. Thank you. Thank you.